So one topic that I never really got around to addressing is detoxing. What is detoxing? I'm sure you've heard all over the internet of people saying to fast for whatever amount of time, or to drink something, or to tape a piece of paper on your foot. Well, maybe I'm exaggerating a bit, but yeah, in this video I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it a bit. Is it bullshit? By the way, there is legitimate detoxification that is actual medicine. For example, when a patient has been overdosed on a toxic chemical such as a drug. But we're talking about the pseudoscientific concept of detoxification here, where people claim that you naturally produce toxins in the body and you need to get rid of it on a regular basis. So this video is for people who are committed to their health, who are wanting to take their health and their life to the next level. Well, there are plenty of ways to ensure that you have good health that is actually based on science. Imagine that, like exercising for example. This is not for anyone who wants some type of quick fix. This is for the people out there who are wanting to cultivate a new level of consciousness and raise their awareness. How exactly does detoxing raise your level of consciousness and awareness? What a load of baloney. Living in today's modern world, uh, detoxification has never been more important. So detox is a buzzword these days. Some people disregard it as some form of uh, starvation, while others stop eating processed sugar for a week and think that that is an adequate detox. And here's a big thing about these natural or alternative medicine or treatments. They can't seem to agree on the vast majority of subjects. Just on the topic of detox alone and you have all of these different methods, each claiming to be the best way to detox your body. You even gave two examples yourself here, fasting and avoiding sugar. I mean, I guess you could just say the latter is just a softcore version of the former. But the methods of detoxification doesn't just stop there. It can range from colon cleansing, herb consumption, and even electromagnetic therapy. And this is one of the things I criticize a lot about naturopathic doctors. The fact that they can't just seem to agree on a treatment for even the same patient. Huh, would you look at that? A good way to tell if a treatment is bullshit or not. What you need to understand is that toxins have accumulated from the day that you were born. So it is really unrealistic to think that you can detox decades worth of toxins in a short amount of time. No, what I'm talking about here is making detoxification a normal and regular part of your everyday lifestyle. And here's where the vagueness comes in, which is also a trend of a lot of alternative medicine proponents by the way. Make everything super vague. Notice how they say toxins instead of listing out specific toxins that your body produces. Tell me, what are the names of these substances that have been accumulating in your body ever since you were born? If you can tell us that, then we would be able to identify its adverse effects and use the appropriate treatment methods to eliminate them if their damages are too severe. Otherwise, you're not giving us anything in particular to work with, which is pretty useless. When you set the stage of a strong foundational um, way of living and well-being, you will notice improvements in all areas of your life. You'll notice more loving relationships, better productivity at work, more creativity and like a newfound zest for life. What? Property of pseudoscience number three. They make promises of very appealing outcomes if you choose to engage in their quackery. This is very attractive towards people who are uninformed about biology. They hear that a problem they have could be magically cured through natural and cheap means with no sacrifice. So of course they would choose that option over whatever conventional medicine is provided to them. I mean, why not? These people said it personally worked on them. Just remember, if it's too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Just like your hopes and dreams of becoming like Professor Stick when you grow up. So we have trillions of cells inside of our bodies and they build up layers upon layers upon layers of toxicity caused from many different things like stress, unhealthy food choices, unnatural skincare products, the environment, the air that we breathe, and so much more. And of course, we're not going to hear about the specific toxins that are produced, right? Well, in that case, let me give you a list. And these are actually taken care of well enough by our internal organs. Let's have a look. Lactate, especially during exercise. Well, the liver does a pretty good job of processing lactate and turning it back into glucose via the Cori cycle. Upon production of lactate, the liver absorbs this acid and converts it back to pyruvate. Gluconeogenesis is then performed, which turns this pyruvate back to glucose. Basically, just the reverse of glycolysis. Glucose is then released back into the bloodstream and ultimately the tissues. So, not really a problem there. The liver does a good enough job. Here's another one, carbon dioxide. As you know, our tissues consume oxygen and release CO2, which is a waste product. 
Carbon dioxide enters the bloodstream and is transported to the lungs, where they are expelled. Some other CO2 waste can diffuse through our skin via gas exchange as well. That's another one off the list. How about nitrogen waste? Cells produce it, especially when breaking down amino acids for energy. This nitrogen waste can be harmful, so the body must get rid of it. The urea cycle takes care of that, and stores this nitrogen as urea, which is then transported to the kidneys to be filtered out of the blood. So no, nitrogen is fine too. And finally, there's water, which of course is taken care of by the kidneys. These are the primary metabolic waste products that cells produce. Now please tell me, which one was the one that was especially harmful and needs to be removed by detoxing? And this puts strain on our organs and it actually impairs their function, so that they're not um, functioning at their optimum level. How is this mysterious compound, which you have yet to identify, putting a strain to our organs? Where are the specifics? This is frustrating because to an average audience that doesn't know any better, the vagueness and the simplicity of this can be very appealing. When scientists use specific words such as gluconeogenesis, many people aren't going to understand it and thus will find it less impactful or convincing. Instead, somebody else saying, toxins can hold their attention more because, you know, they know what a toxin is. And of course there would be those things in your body. And over many years, we also accumulate negative energy and ways of thinking that may not be serving us anymore. Negative energy? Oh man. What's next? Your chakra needs to be cleansed as well? So we need to clean out our bodies so that our spirit and soul can radiate and energy can flow freely through us. Right, so you said that these toxins can damage our organs, and now apparently it can also damage our souls, which is something that's, you know, 100% proven to exist without a shadow of a doubt. Oh yeah, that soul. And somehow the physical things produced by our cells are potent enough to pass through a dimension or something and directly damage our soul. And we all know that shit stays with you when you pass into the afterlife. Oh, I can feel it. Oh god, my fucking soul. Help the toxins. They're too strong. Oh wait, no, I'm fine. And obstructions are released and brought to the surface so that we can become aware of them. And these come in the form of aches and pains, suppressed emotions, fear, anxiety, and those sorts of things. And then once we cultivate this awareness about them, we can then move forward and make the necessary adjustments that we need to to truly heal at the core. Healing at the core. This really reminds me of certain types of traditional Chinese medication in which they claim to heal the body in a holistic manner. And a lot of people believe that. Many of my friends here even claim that Western medicine is for healing the outer symptoms or provide a temporary solution, while traditional Chinese medicine helps you at the core, which couldn't be more bullshit. Of course, Eastern medicine is a topic for another video. If you claim that something will heal you at the core or in a holistic manner, I will instantly give you my skeptical glaze, because unless there's a specific condition, it's going to be on the borderline of pseudoscience. Let me give you an example. If we have a patient who has lung cancer, this cancer can cause a variety of symptoms such as pain in the chest, coughing, respiratory difficulties, swollen lymph nodes, weight loss, etc. You could say that these symptoms are individually present, or you could go and tackle the disease at its core, which is the cancer. In this case, yes, you should tackle this at the core, I guess. However, when you say that a medicine or procedure is going to heal someone at the core and increase overall lifestyle in general without there actually being any sort of identifiable illnesses, much less the specificity of symptoms, that's pseudoscience. To claim that a detoxing procedure will have a holistic healing power on the general lifestyle of people isn't exactly in our dictionary of proven medicine. So yes, the body is a beautiful self-healing and self-regenerating mechanism, um, but unfortunately in the world that we live in today, the elimination organs are overloaded with toxins. The lymph is backed up and the restorative processes are just a lot slower than they normally would be. Well, no. Under normal conditions, the lymphs aren't backed up. They get swollen, sure, but that's during certain types of infection or cancer. Funny how you didn't actually mention the other organs, because they actually do a good job in eliminating waste. The kidneys, for example, work constantly to filter our blood. We all have two kidneys, but it is very possible to live with just one. Hmm, if our detoxification organs are so busy and backed up, how could we possibly live with just one kidney? Therefore, we really do need to assist the body's natural detoxification processes so that we can truly heal and get to the core of all disease. And by doing this, we help our body maintain a healthy gut symbiosis, a healthy balance in the gut. Are you serious? Somehow this is all related to our gut microbes now? 
I'm lost for words. Well, I guess I'll end it here. Thanks guys for watching. If you haven't already, I'd love to have you subscribe to join the Stick Army. Peace.